Hello again, Biology 300 students. I'm Mr. Parker here, and this is Ecology Screencast session number one. And we're going to be looking at uh, introducing you to ideas of ecology in the biosphere. And there will be a total of five screencasts for this you know, unit that will take us a couple weeks to get through. And uh, we'll be doing three different labs to reinforce some of the ideas that we're going to talk about um, throughout the unit. All right. So you should have out your um, note-taking um, paper, either um, you know through the packet or your own notebook, and we'll get started here. Okay. So taking a look at the ideas of um, ecology, let's go ahead and define what ecology means. Okay. As you can see here, it's the study of the interaction of, of organisms with one another and with their physical environment. Okay. So we're talking about all living things. Okay. Anything that's living, any living organisms, it could be plants, animals. Um, going in that route. Um, and when we talk about your physical environment, we're talking about anything that is non-living. Okay, so it's your, uh, the interaction between anything that's living with the, uh, also the, non, the non-living factors. And we'll go ahead and define uh, the living and non-living factors here in a few minutes. Um, but if we look at the, uh, the root word or where the word ecology comes from is ecos, which means the house. Okay, and what we're talking about, you know, when we mean the house, or why do they use the term ecology? Because the whole, you know, if you think of the earth, or what we refer to as the biosphere, that is the house for all living organisms that we live in, and how we interact with the non-living things um, plays a role in um, basically kind of protecting our house, or developing our house, or maintaining our house, however we're looking at it, okay? So, uh, moving forward from here, um, what is the biosphere? Okay, I mentioned the term, what does the biosphere mean? Um, you know, I talked about it kind of, you know, if you look at the word um, and, and kind of break the word down, okay, you, I think most of you know what sphere means, um, but we, and most of you know what bio is, okay, kind of the living, uh, you know, sphere meaning circle or something like that. Um, but if we're looking at within the uh, idea of um, ecology, okay, uh, we're looking at some pictures here, all right? So, Basically, what we're looking at is anything that's living, okay, um, and within the globe, and we're going to put some restrictions on this here in a second, okay? So, defining this is uh, the biosphere just means the living globe. So the biosphere is the part of the earth in which life exists, okay? And we'll kind of put, like I said, mentioned here in, in uh, after we watch a short video clip, uh, we'll go ahead and put the, uh, the restrictions on how far above and below the earth's surface um, they consider the living, they have found living organisms. Um, to help define that a little bit. Okay, so here's the definition of the biosphere. Again, the living globe where life exists. Okay, nice picture of the globe there for you. All right. Um, so in this video, uh, we're going to take you through the idea a little bit of the biosphere and give you a quick intro to the ideas of ecology. of living species populate the earth and all are intricately linked together to form a global ecosystem where life's powerful chemistry shapes and is shaped by the non-living world. Life on earth exists exclusively within a very thin layer that extends over a roughly nine mile distance from high in the sky to slightly beneath its surface. This life-supporting zone is called the ecosphere or biosphere and is, so far as we have yet been able to discover, the only place in the universe where life as we know it exists. Within the ecosphere, energy from the sun activates life processes as chemicals from air, water and soil are combined to form living organisms. Whatever happens to the ecosphere determines what will happen to the people who live in it. For it is impossible to separate an individual human from the ecosphere of which he or she is a part. For example, without the photosynthesis carried out by green plants, there would be no oxygen to support human or animal life. And there would be no fuel to run our cars or heat our homes. Without the biological processes which take place in the soil, we would have no food crops. And without the action of aquatic organisms, many of us would have no pure water to drink. 
The ecosphere is composed of all the smaller ecosystems on Earth. From freshwater streams to tide pools. From deserts to rainforests. All right, uh, now returning after you have a little bit of a better idea of what they uh, refer to when they refer to as the, the biosphere, or they use the term ecosphere, and what's living, in that, you know, the living factors within the um, biosphere. Let's go ahead and kind of define what the, bios what cons um, what the biosphere consists of. Um, we have, it includes all land, air, and water. Okay, it extends from about eight kilometers above the Earth's surface to about as eight, about eight kilometers below the Earth's surface. And um, living organisms are not distributed uniformly, okay? So what this is saying, like an example here, they give you in the polar regions, um, there are a few organisms, whereas maybe in the tropical regions, there's a lot of organisms. So that's what it means by uniformly. Um, certain areas are going to have more organisms than others. All right, so these are the basic three um, characteristics of a biosphere. consists of the land, air, water, eight kilometers above and below the Earth's surface, and the organisms are kind of distributed um, unequally throughout the biosphere, okay? Um, so moving forward from here, we're gonna take a quick look at what um, the ecosystem is. Um, but first, let's go ahead and just kind of showing you the pictures. Here we have the um, looking at land, air, and resembling the ideas of water. Okay, maybe that'll give you a better visual as you think about um, some of the um, stipulations on what a biosphere consists of. All right, so the eco uh, ecosystem. Uh, ecosystems are small biological units, okay? They kind of, if you look at it um, within the whole biosphere, these small units is what makes up um, or, you know, begins to make up what the biosphere is all consist of. Um, it consists of a given area's physical features and living organisms, okay? Again, the physical features, we're talking about things that are non-living and then also the living organisms that are within it. And all of the um, biotic and abiotic factors in a given area make up the ecosystem. And we're gonna, uh, the next slide here, we'll talk about what's the difference between biotic and abiotic um, factors and uh, what role they play in the idea of the, uh, ideas of the ecosystem. All right, so your, um, your abiotic factors versus your biotic fa factors. If you just kind of look at the root word that we have, bio, again, that means living, okay? So you can, obviously, the ones on the, the biotic factors here on the right-hand side, okay, you can see living organisms. Um, versus here on the abiotic side, you have the um, non-living organisms, so uh, non-living features. So abiotic is anything that's not living, and your biotic are any factors that are living. And I'll give you some examples here. You can see water, sunlight, soil type, rocks, temperature, humidity, elevation, uh, city levels, anything that deals with the non-living feature. Um, and anything that falls underneath these, the large kingdoms that we talked about, talked about in the classification taxonomy units, um, all fall underneath the idea of the biotic factors. And these are always working, okay, they're always kind of working together or uh, intertwined with each other, um, how they're affecting each other, um, and how they affect the overall um, ecosystem that they're involved with, okay? So we're going to take another short little video clip look at the idea of the ecosystem and these factors. Over millions of years, species of plants and animals have adapted to the environmental conditions in which they live. This has led to an amazing variety and biodiversity of life on our planet. Coral has found a niche in shallow tropical waters. Ducks have adapted to live in the ponds and waterways. Kudus and oryxes thrive on the savanna grasslands of Africa. But organisms do not live in isolation. They live within ecosystems, a habitat where plants, animals, and microorganisms interact with each other and with their natural surroundings. There are many types of ecosystems. A pond is a good example. So is an ocean shore, a farmer's field, or a forest glen. An ecosystem includes both the biotic, or living components, and the abiotic, or non-living components of the system. All of the living organisms found in an ecosystem are known as its biota. These living things integrated together make up a community. In order for a species to survive, it must have a niche within the community 
so it can gain the food necessary for its survival and reproduce its young. We are going to look at the interdependence that exists within ecosystems and point to some of the pressing environmental problems that are threatening many of our ecosystems today. All right, so hopefully um, that video had given you a little bit better understanding of what an ecosystem is and how these small subunits or these ecosystems kind of build up what we call the biomes and eventually it leads to building up the different the, uh, the biosphere in general. And then it also gave you a little bit of an idea of how the abiotic and biotic factors work within that ecosystem. Okay, the thing you need to remember is that there are many different types of ecosystems in nature. Okay, um, and they're all kind of intertwined together. So, you know, just giving you some pictures of some different ones here. You can see kind of a lake. Uh, we have a stream. Um, we have prairie. And we have forests. Now, there's, uh, there's other ones. These are just some of the main ones that you probably are familiar with. And they all kind of connect because they all kind of, you know, where one ends, another one starts. Okay, just like... You know, if we're talking about cities, you know, Downers Grove connects to, uh, to Lyle or, um, you know, if you're thinking that direction or Hinsdale, they're all kind of connected. There's not like a clear-cut line. Same way with when we're talking about um, these ecosystems, they're all connected um, and they're all working kind of, um, you know, organisms may travel in and out of these different ecosystems, okay? Uh, so kind of just showing you a picture, just kind of give you a visual, you know, thinking that all these organisms and ecosystems are connected in some way, they all... You know, influence each each other and how the organisms are traveling in and out of these different ecosystems. Okay, to um, go into a little bit more into the uh, specifics on what an or what builds up these ecosystems. Uh, first is a population. Okay, we've talked about population before in the evolution unit. Um, we talked about species and we talked about classification and taxonomy. Uh, but it's a collection of individuals with the same species in a given area who can breed with one another, okay? Again, a species, okay? Remember the, the last test we talked about, um, you know, a crab, crab apple trees that are in the backyard, of, uh, you know, of my backyard, it's considered to be a species because it's a defined area, they can interbreed with each other, and they produce offspring that are fertile, okay? And then we have a community, and this is all the populations of an organism living in a given area, all the, um, we're talking about all the biota factors, all the living factors, okay? So, you know, we kind of think of Downers Grove, you think that we have, you know, we have the human population, the dog population, cat population. So we have a bunch of different populations that build up or make up the whole community of Downers Grove. And eventually, this community is what builds up our ecosystems, okay? So kind of give you a visual of that, okay, you have in this diagram, or this picture on the bottom, uh, if we look at just the zebras here, this is uh, the population, the zebra population, okay? Now, when we look at this picture here, okay, we could be looking at the particular tree population, the grass population, um, you know, there's other types of trees up here in the mountains. Um, they're not, you're not even including all the animals, the different populations that live within this uh, mountain area, mountain ecosystem that we're looking at, okay? So, again, the population is kind of, you know, your species which is a population, builds up your communities. And if we move forward from here, you'll kind of give you an idea of what that's, how they're all connected, okay? So you can see here, this is this is just an individual, okay? This would be like you as an individual. And then if we're talking about the population, it might be the human population. And then we're talking about the Downers Grove community. And then this particular ecosystem that we're in, okay? And then a bunch of ecosystems put together make up a biome, depending on what biome you live in. And then we have a bunch of biomes that make up your biosphere, okay? And this will basically um, goes down to the individual. Now, we can get smaller than this, and we've talked about building up organisms from down to, like, the atoms, the molecules, that kind of stuff, um, you know, the tissues and organs. But uh, we're not going that far, okay? And this is just kind of the building up of, of the particular ecosystem that we're looking at. Um, so in this screencast... Uh, session number one, where you, you were introduced to the idea, idea of the biosphere and the idea of ecosystems, populations, communities, uh, abiotic versus biotic factors. And um, in the next screencast, we'll go ahead and kind of take a little bit further and we'll take a look at what we call ecological succession. Okay. Um, and after you watch the first and second screencast, you'll come into class and we'll do some activities to help further the information that you've gathered from uh, this particular screencast.